Tropes and archetypes have always fascinated me in video games as well as in other forms of media. These are recurring character themes, whether it be the brave hero, the merciless villain, or the comic relief. But in today's episode, I want to take a look at archetypes that exist in Smash, though not based on their character, rather on their abilities. First, let me ask you, what's the fairest matchup in Smash, or any fighting game for that matter? Fox vs Falco in Melee? Widely regarded as a pretty even matchup, but no. How about Pit vs Dark Pit in Smash 4, probably the most even matchup in the game? Close, but still no. The fairest matchup is actually a ditto. A pointless claim, I know. A mirror match, no duh. But this will help me demonstrate my point. As you know, in a ditto, both players have access to the exact same toolkit their character offers, making it impossible for either to have an inherent advantage. With this in mind, we can have the fairest fighting game ever, put Mario smack dab right in the middle, and take out the rest. Bam, perfect balance. But who would want to play such a game? It's shallow, it's boring, it's repetitive. So to avoid that, devs create a variety of characters with different attributes. The mold in which these attributes for a character fall under are the archetypes I'll be discussing. I'm going to be borrowing some terminology from tvtropes.org, since they're very depictive. Now to maintain as much balance as possible, where a character has a strong attribute, they must also have a weak one. Let's start off with a popular example of such an archetype. The strong, but fragile. You probably know them as glass cannons. Characters who fall into this class usually have immense kill power, but can hardly take a hit themselves. This archetype actually has a pretty long history. It's deeply rooted in games of the past, like how Mario could easily take out the Goomba, but the Goomba can also easily take out Mario. Although less extreme after life bars became more common, glass cannons still continue to appear in games up to the present day. In Smash, arguably the glassiest of the cannons are probably Jigglypuff in Melee and Mewtwo in Smash 4. One has the notorious rest, and the other has an insanely powerful moveset. The drawback of course is that the both of them are as light as a feather. But for me, the most interesting glass cannon is Little Mac. I feel he is truly unique, because what makes him glass isn't necessarily about his weight. Rather, it's his ability to get back on stage, which plays on the very essence of what makes Smash special. And of course, we all know why he's a cannon. But one big difference with Little Mac is that instead of high air mobility, he has high ground mobility, which leads us to the fragile speedsters. As the name suggests, these characters are fast but fragile. They typically have low health or defense stats, but high speed and evasion stats. Now I know she's not from Smash, but I can't talk about this archetype without bringing up Tracer from Overwatch, as she fits the bill perfectly. She's got the lowest health in the game, but her evasion is through the roof thanks to her blink and recall abilities. Though back to Smash, I'd say Pikachu would fall under this archetype, mainly due to its sporadic movement with quick attack, but at the same time fragile because it's so light. Well, while we're on the topic of Pokemon, the series itself actually has a number of these. Alakazam is a good example, boasting high speed but low defense and HP. Its saving grace is high special attack which makes him sort of a glass cannon as well. On the other side of the spectrum is an archetype completely opposite of glass cannon, the sturdy but weak. They're also known as stone walls. Such characters will sacrifice lots of attack power for lots of durability. This is a very common class found in team-based games. It's usually a character who is protecting his entire team by soaking up all the damage, so that in return, his team can deal the damage for him. Now because most fighting games focus on just one-on-one -on -one battles, this class is pretty rare. But there is one character in Smash that fits this archetype perfectly, and that's Shulk, with a shield art activated. As you know, he takes much less damage and knockback, allowing him to take super strong hits at critical health and still survive. The drawback is he deals less damage and knockback himself. Though Shulk is really an exception to the rule, 
Cause truth is, when it comes to highly durable characters in Smash, 99% of the time, they pack a punch as well. This archetype is the strong, but slow. They're also known as Mighty Glaciers. Many of the heavier characters fall into this category. Ganondorf, DDD, Ike, Charizard, etc. They're all really strong, plus they've got the weight to keep themselves alive. The drawback is, of course, subpar mobility and sluggish moves. Though there's an interesting thing I want to point out, and that's Olimar's set of Pikmin. They're actually a mini subset of archetypes on their own. The Mighty Glacier would of course be the purple one. It packs a punch, but lags behind the rest, just like in the original series. Besides Smash, this archetype is virtually in every single game. Cause when you think about it, their strengths and weaknesses just make logical sense. You can't be throwing around a hundred pound fist and expect to be able to dart all over the place. But just gotta catch them once, and they'll be in for a boatload of pain. There's another noteworthy example in one of my favorite games, and that'd be the Dynamo Roller. Rollers in general are very strong, but the Dynamo takes it to the next level with more range and wider coverage. The drawback is, I'm sure you know by now, it's horrendously slow. I may have great power, but what good is it if I can't catch my enemy? It takes more than brute strength to win a fight. So far, I've only been discussing characters that specialize in one or two attributes. But just like in real life, where there are people who are jack of all trades, we have characters who are a jack of all stats. As the name suggests, their strengths are very well rounded, making them decent at everything, but a master of nothing. This is another very common archetype, mainly for players who want to dabble in a bit of every playstyle. These can be characters like Mario and Mario Kart, or the Blue Falcon in F-Zero, the Red Mage from Final Fantasy, and so on. Although debatable, I would argue that Mario fits this archetype perfectly in Smash 4, cause his moveset has a bit of everything in it. He's got a basic, easy to pick up combo game a decent reflector and projectile, and a solid finishing move. A lot of his movement data even further shows this, as his fall speed, run speed, weight, and air acceleration are pretty average compared to everyone else. But this is just my speculation. I mean, when we take all the stages, techniques, and the many other variables into account, the most average character may very well be someone else. Now, what happens if we give this archetype a bit of a nudge in every attribute? Our well-rounded character has now become a master of all. Those who fall into this archetype are always the top tiers, though by no means are they intended to be this way. They're simply the result of not having a perfectly balanced game, especially when the roster gets as big as Smash's. Bayonetta in Smash 4 is a very good example. Great mobility and recovery coupled with an insane combo game and kill potential. Similarly, Fox in Melee and Pikachu in 64 both have very clear advantages in their abilities compared to the majority of the roster, giving them the top tier spots in most of the game's life so far. In cases where the game is poorly balanced, this archetype will likely become an overpowered character. I've talked about this in my What's Considered Banworthy episode, in Smash, Brawl's Meta Knight is hands down the poster child of this archetype. He has great ground mobility, an incredible aerial game, amazing frame data on most of his moves, ridiculously good recovery options, has extremely high priority, all topped with broken tactics, which had to be banned for the rest of the characters to even have a chance. Now if we take a look at other genres, Pokemon isn't as lucky. The Pokemon that fit this archetype are straight up banned in the more commonly used rule sets. These are usually a number of legendaries or mythical Pokemon, all whom have substantially higher stats or move pools. Looking at the entire roster for Smash, majority of the characters don't fit an archetype perfectly. Most have attributes at least from a bit of each, so I think it's better to look at the entire thing as sort of a spectrum. The archetypes I discussed in this episode are what i found to be among the most common in Smash, and other games in general, and whose strengths and weaknesses usually play a big part in keeping a game's balance, while also giving the players variety. There are definitely more that I haven't covered. Well, 
How about you? Are there other archetypes that you've noticed when playing Smash? Or any game for that matter? It'll be interesting to know your experiences. Before I wrap up, I want to apologize for not uploading in so long. A roommate I was sharing a place with actually left pretty abruptly, so I had to find a new place to live fast, and had to take on more shifts at work to you know, cover the extra expenses. Overall, it's been a pretty rough few months for me, but I'll see how it goes from here on out. Anyways, of course, I want to thank my Patreons for your support. I appreciate it a lot, and again, I'm sorry for the lack of uploads. I'll try my best to keep a tighter schedule. Well, with that said, I hope you all found this video interesting, and I'll see everyone in my next one. Take care.